Jimmy Butler is a bully. Uh-oh, here we go. You don't know me. You only know what I allow you to see. But you were quick to try to call me I'm out about it. I'm just saying. <laughs> Taylor Rooks, and this is Take It There, and we are about to take a subway train to Penn Station to get on another train to Philly. So let's go. We are on the train going an hour south to Philadelphia to interview the enigma that is Jimmy Butler. Obviously, he's been in the news a lot in the past couple months. Now he's playing for the 76ers. And we are going to his home to really get to the core of Jimmy Buckets. Lots of stuff in here, Jimmy. Man, you got a billion things going on. How are you? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. So, um, we've completely taken over your home. For sure. We're all here just to figure out who is Jimmy Butler. It's what I tell a lot of people. You don't know me. You only know what I allow you to see when it comes to what you read in the media. Like, nobody knows what I really do on a daily basis. I'm sure you'll find out here pretty soon. To say the least, I am myself. Okay, so for every guest, we do a take it there segment. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you're going to take me to that moment or that time. Okay? Okay. Take me to your potential free agency decision this summer. I can't take you there. When that moment gets here, it'll be fun, but it'll be a moment that's too far away to worry about right now. Take me to a day in Tomball, Texas. When I was there, it was kind of like whenever you got bored, take your ass outside and do something. Country type stuff. Now, like, we got like two Walmarts, we got a Chick fil A. It's crazy. I don't even recognize it. I think I'm in downtown Houston when I go through Tomball. Take me to your first game of spades. Spades, I've, I've, I've played for a while, but memorable game whenever I was in college. A lot of cheating was going on back in the day, though. He doesn't think anyone's going to be my partner in spades. And, uh, and Little do they know, trash. I'm probably better than everyone in this house. Like La please. basura. You know what that means? Yeah, trash. Trash. All right, time for spades. Let me cut the card. You have written the winners and the suckers. We're the winners, y'all the suckers. If that's what you want to believe. Okay. Were you a good kid, Jimmy? No, my car. Or did you get in trouble? I don't get in trouble. Or did you just not get caught when you got in trouble? I don't get in trouble. Tries to beat him to the spot. Right shoulder in. That's close, Mike, though, huh? That is close now. Players have to be separated. So we can agree you're confrontational. You've oh, described yourself hell as that. Yeah. Okay. I like it. And you say that you feed off of confrontation. In what ways has that helped your career? I think it's got me to the point that I am at in my career. Up and in, banks it all, and a foul. Tough shot from Jimmy Butler. If I was in the NBA and I played with Philadelphia, I'd want to live in the city. But Jimmy living so far out is so indicative of who Jimmy is. I don't bother nobody. Yeah. I stay to myself, me and my guys, every single day. We do the same stuff. We wake up early, we'll go train, we'll do some Pilates, get my core right, we'll shoot, crack jokes on each other all day. When I'm in my home, like, I. I'm, I'm carefree, like I don't worry about nothing. I don't worry about what people say or think. I read an article where it said uh -oh. that you... Uh-oh, here we go. What is I read that an mean? article. What article did you read? Where do you think we go? That's what people do. I don't even know what you're finna say, but just think about this. The article that you read, mm -hmm. they only let you know what they want you to know. Well, I think that you're gonna be very surprised on my answer, but you were quick to try to calm me I'm, out about I'm, it. I'm, I'm just saying, just throwing it out there. I read an article once that said that you like to journal. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Is that accurate? That is. That's very accurate. Okay. How often do you journal? I journal a lot. At, at least once a day. Just because as much as going on in my life at any certain time, I need to write it down because I may need a vent. I'm, I'm human like everybody else. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you find yourself journaling about more than others? I mean, obviously basketball because that's a big part of my life. How am I going to make sure that everybody in my group of people and my crew can put food on the table for them and their family. That's the main thing that's on my mind because if, if, if my guys are okay, I know I'm going to be okay. Um, if they're happy, I'm happy. Okay, so we know what happiness looks like for you. 
What does sadness look like to you? I'm sitting in my room. Don't knock on my damn door. Don't talk to me. That's, that's the gist of it. Yeah. I'm by myself. Tell me the time that sticks out that you were the most sad. I would probably say when I wanted to quit basketball forever in Marquette. And I was like, yeah, you know what? The basketball thing ain't for me. I wish I would have had a journal then to get it all out instead of just talking to myself in the dark. And I was like, man, I don't know what to do, who to talk to, who can relate. Well, talk to me about that moment. Why did you want to quit basketball? Why was it not I mean, you're so far away from home. And to tell you the truth, I didn't do no research. I didn't know that it snowed. I didn't know that it got cold. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I went up there like I was still in Texas. Basketball shorts, t-shirts, flip-flops. The one person that did help me though, I will tell you this, Joe Fulce, we went to Marquette together. So it was like whenever we had a problem, we were each other's kind of coping mechanism. The fact that you just had somebody to listen to definitely helped. Yeah. Like I go to therapy every week yeah. and I think that it's the most amazing thing just because what you you're go to able therapy to for? talk to Like retail therapy, better. like you're going shopping. No, therapy, like I go, I like sit, wine I therapy, do what we're doing you right sit now. and drink wine. There's yeah. different types of therapy. Um, but you're right. Therapy comes in many different forms and it almost seems like that journals of therapy, being able to talk to someone even if they aren't listening to you as a therapy. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious if you've ever thought about doing actual therapy. Done it before. Yeah, Tell I've me about it. Before. I mean, I think there's a better way for me to talk to people and handle things. I like when people tell me to like, just stop being a bitch, like yeah. suck it up. Ooh, come here. No. <laughs> it, it, it gets real feisty. You know, stuff gets strong. I I get a good hand. Names get, no. names yeah. get just demolished. No, they didn't. Yeah. No, no, no. Yo, you cannot do that. But you can. I know that though. No, 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 but you can. I, but you can. That's, that's, cheating. that's, that's cheating. cheating. That's cheating. That's cheating. That's cheating. I can say whatever I want. That's you can't tell your partner what lit. How well do you guys know each other as partners? Do you know what he's going to do before he does it? I know it? I play the spade and you need to play the spade. How well do you know him? There. And that just comes with time? Yeah, just like shooting a free throw. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> Woo, I got nervous. Man, if he, if he plays ace, we have it. So I have a very serious, hard-hitting question. What is up with the Ninja Turtle headband? It's not a Ninja Turtle headband. It is a Ninja Turtle headband. No, it's, it's like the not. Donatello because it, it is in the back and it flows. For one, you could have you could have said Raphael, like okay. all of them. Okay. Let's just get that out of the way. But that's not what it is. Okay, then tell me what? Why are you doing that? Kyrie Ward, Drew Ward. So I was like, you know what? Let me get in on it. Tie that <laughs> damn thing around my neck if I want to, and wear it as a bow. What's it like being on a basketball team with a personality like Joel Embiid? Different, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I like it because he got some of, I don't give a fuck in him. Like, yo, I'm going at you. But he'll tell you, like, that's what I like about it. Like, yeah, all right, we cool, but I'm finna, I'm finna bust your ass tonight. Like, I, I like that. I like being on a team with real competitors. Who controls the music in the locker room? Not Amir Johnson. I, I heard his playlist <laughs> before the game, uh, one of these home games. Trash. Terrible. What's the mood of your playlist? Right now, probably some Scotty McCrary, Mr. Tenpenny. Drunk Me is a great song, but I think the song on the album is uh, Walk Like Him. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. These are all country artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not talking about nothing else country here. What made you start listening to country music? Because that seems different than what people would expect. It all started just with getting on people's nerves in college. Everybody was wearing uh, the Beats headphones around their neck instead of on their ears like normal people do. And you could hear the music. So Lil Wayne from this corner, Wiz Khalifa, Jeezy, Drake, name it. It was all in there. And I was just like, yo, turn your music down. And I was like, no, my own business, pay attention and listen to what's in your headphones. I said, say no more, got you. So next game rolls around and I walk in the same way that they were with the headphones right here, uh, but when uh, Tim McGraw don't take the girl. And everybody was like, turn that shit off. And I was like, no, hell no. Remember what y'all just told me, my own business and listen to what's in your headphones. So I actually started listening to the lyrics and uh, I actually liked the music, so I stuck with it. Growing town, man. 
His birthday was this week. You claim to be a better football player than Antonio Brown. Yes. With that being said, I could be in debt 30000 to him right now because I tried to guard him in a red zone and failed. One of the best wide receivers in the league. You bet him $30,000. Hypothetically speaking, it started at 10. He could or could not have went three for three. Three times 10 is 30. I'm just saying it could have happened. You thought you would best AB once. Hypothetically speaking, yes. Was it a reach? Hypothetically, <laughs> hypothetically, it could have hypothetically been a bad way to lose hypothetically $30,000. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Taylor, the bet was he could stop me for three fade routes from Russell Wilson. Hey, Jim, you know you're one of my close friends, and your credit always good with me. But I think today you need to pay. Pay up, buddy. It's been three years. I just donated to my charity. What's that to you? Shot in the bucket. Jimmy Buckets. Yeah. You do not care what people think of you. Yeah. I hear that. I think that most people do care. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that they believe that they do know about you. I want to say some of those things, and I want your take on their beliefs. Okay. Okay. Jimmy Butler is a diva. I don't even like being in the spotlight. I don't even like being on TV. I don't like doing media. I just got to do it. No, but I think the, the way that people write a story or narrate something, I see where you could get that from. Not mad at it. Jimmy Butler is a bully. Stop it. That's a... Really? You want to use that word with everything that's going on in the world right now to try to say that I'm a bully? Who am I bullying? Jimmy Butler is toxic. Once again, don't think so. I got way too much in my life going on to be worried about if somebody thinks that I'm toxic. I actually think that majority of my teammates that I play with, we was, we was cool. Jimmy Butler is not a max player. That is to be determined. I don't play this game for the bread anyways. Mm -hmm. You just like, you know, you let them think what they want to think. I like it though. Yeah. I don't want everybody to like me. What fun is that? I'd actually like more people to, to dislike me. Cause then you really paying attention. You know, you take whatever I say and choose to accept it, believe it, not like me even more, just be you. Like, I'ma be me whether you like it or not. I don't <laughs> give, in the way that I like to say it, I don't give a fuck. I think fuck is your favorite cuss word. Yeah. You're a fuck guy. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, What's your yeah. second favorite cuss word? Motherfucker. Oh, so just a variation of fuck. Yeah. Okay. You know, you gotta put that one in there. Did we win? Yes, we got set twice. Even a garbage can gets a steak and he wants to go out. In the wise words of Rob. <laughs> hey, I beat allegedly the greatest. Both of y'all trash. You're great. Great game. Good game. Yeah. Oh, yeah handshake. <laughs> Good game. Yeah. I don't shake hands after basketball games. I'm damn sure not gonna shake hands. You better move before you Good get your game. hands shut in this damn refrigerator. <laughs> selfie, selfie, selfie. This is why I like being on this side. I can't. Here, you want to switch it? You take it. I'll tell you what, ready? I'm not holding phone because if I drop it, I'm not paying for it. So. <laughs> okay, ready, set, go. What's up, you guys? It's Taylor Brooks with Bleacher Report. Make sure that you subscribe for some more video content.